Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's me, Waram, and today I'll be teaching you how to play Wraith. We'll break down Wraith's tactical, passive, and ultimate ability. I'll also be providing tips on each of these abilities on how they should be used, and just tips in general. But before we get into today's video, make sure to check out my Discord, where you can try to make some new friends. It's a great place to share a laugh, or just try to find people to play with. And don't forget to also check out my other social media, such as TikTok, where I post twice daily. And with that being said, let's jump into the video. First up, let's break down the Wraith's passive ability, also known as Voice from the Void. This will give you a voice that warns you whenever there's any kind of danger in the area. Some of these warnings are, an enemy is taking aim, an enemy with a sniper rifle is taking aim, there are enemy traps nearby, which mainly refers to caustic gas or Watson's fences, there are many enemies nearby, and if there was a big fight that recently broke out, you'll get the warning that many people died here. You're able to share these hints from the void with your teammates by a simple push of a button. When it comes to tips about your passive ability, I would typically like to find cover whenever I hear a voice warning. Then, I'd scout around and look and see if I see an enemy. I like to find cover because typically, when your enemy is taking aim at you, they're gonna shoot next. And if it's a voice warning warning about a sniper rifle, I'm always paranoid that it might be a Kraber. So yeah, find cover first and then scout the area. Also, don't forget to give your teammates that heads up because normally when you're in danger, they're going to be in danger too. So give them that heads up. And lastly, there is a really big bug when it comes to voice from the void. Sometimes there'll be barrels of traps in front of you, or there might be enemies just blatantly aiming at you, and you don't get that voice warning. It's just always been a bug, and I guess it's just uh, complicated when it comes to code in their programming? I'm not sure, but just be aware of it. Sometimes it will be aiming at you. Next up, let's talk about Wraith's tactical ability, also known as Into the Void. Into the Void is on a 25 second cooldown, and it takes about 1.25 seconds to activate this ability. One second of that is pure focusing, and the other 0.25 second is activating the ability. When trying to activate Into the Void for that 1.25 seconds, you'll receive a debuff. Specifically, you'll receive a 20% movement speed debuff. So if you're sprinting, it'll take you out of your sprint, and you'll be walking at 80% movement speed. This ability is best used behind cover, or to keep your momentum while you're sliding down a hill, or the next best thing you could do if you have no cover is spam random strafe pattern to make yourself a harder target. Upon activation, Wraith will enter the void for 4 seconds, where she becomes invulnerable and she has a 30% speed boost. You'll be able to travel 40 to 50 meters while in the void. This means you'll have the speed boost and you'll be completely invulnerable for this time period. For that 4 seconds, you can cover up to 45 meters and that's a lot of distance to get you from cover to cover. While in the void, you're still able to see your enemies so you know where you're going and where to avoid. And, your enemies could also see a blue trail you'll be leaving behind, so they could also track you, so keep this in mind. Lastly, when it comes to your outside environment, in the void, you're unable to interact with certain objects such as doors, so your enemies can trap you in a building if they see you enter the void, they could simply close the door and wait for you to come out of the void. But you are able to jump on the zip lines to get out that way. Now here's some quick tips that you could implement to your own gameplay to help you with Wraith's tactical ability. For our first tip, Wraith tactical ability can be used to create distance or close the gap between you and your enemies. It can also be used to take off angles, meaning that if you need to run away, you could use it to retreat. If you need to close the gap between you and your enemy without taking any damage, you could get closer to them and take no damage. Or if you just want to get off angles, you can get off angles while your teammates are shooting from one angle and you have a completely different angle, forcing your enemies to reposition or just die. For tip number two, whenever you're in a pinch, pop dimensional rift first then pop your tactical ability. This will bypass the focusing animation, which is 1 second, and you'll be able to enter the void in just 0.25 seconds, which is just a quarter of a second. It also removes that slight debuff you get for when you're popping your tactical ability. That 20% speed debuff will now go away, so now you'll pop your tactical ability at full speed, so anytime you're in a pinch, remember, pop your ult, then your attack, and it'll save your life. And for my last tip, anytime you accidentally hit your tactical ability and you want to cancel it, you could simply climb a wall and this will stop your ability. This is really helpful because sometimes you don't want to enter the void. That'll take you away from your teammates for 4 seconds and if they need help in a pinch, make sure you're there with them. You'll have 1.25 seconds to cancel the ability and fight with them. And lastly, we have Wraith ultimate ability, Dimensional Rift. Dimensional Rift is on a 3.5 minute cooldown, which is also 210 seconds and you're able to link one location to another location. Dimensional Rift will stay open for about 45 seconds, which equates to when you have around 21% with the gray helmet of your ultimate ability coming back, and 27% if you have a gold helmet. This way, you know when a portal is about to disappear, so you can take it back. 
The Mentinel Rift will typically stretch for about 150 meters, so normally you want to ping the location you want to portal to, make sure it's within that range, then set your portal. The worst thing that could happen is that you're too short reaching your location, so ping that before you set your portal. When you first pop Dimensional Rift, you'll receive a 22% speed boost, and this will go all the way up to 57% the further you go away from your portal. So this will give you a tremendous speed boost when you need it, and it's great for use if you want to run away from enemies or just get some distance. If you ever accidentally pop your Dimensional Rift and you don't feel like waiting 3.5 seconds for another one, if you use under 5% of the ultimate, you'll fully be refunded. So you're all good. So if you're ever on the fence uh, if you should be portaling to a location or not, and you just want to hold that portal in your hand and you take a couple steps, that's perfectly fine. And don't forget, anytime you take Wraith portal, you're invulnerable to any damage. And just like when she uses her tactical ability, you will leave a blue trail, so your enemies will be knowing the general direction you're going in. And lastly, anytime you're about to portal, make sure that both ends of your portals will not be in ring. Because typically, instead of 45 seconds, the portal will disappear in 5 seconds. But, you could work around this if one end of the portal is in ring, and the other end of the portal is safe. That way, the portal will stay for 45 seconds. Now, let's move on to some tips about Wraith Ultimate Dimensional Rift. Dimensional Rift makes Thrace so versatile with the stuff that she could do. She could be used as an entry fragger entering with that portal to have a safe way back out, or one of the best ways you could use her is if your teammate down, you could use Wraith as a complete medic, portaling your teammate out of ring, or if they're just downed by an enemy, portal them into safety, get that safe res, and then enter back to fight when you're ready and all healed up. For tip number two when it comes to using portal, is that you want to use portals to take multiple angles, which you could hold. For example, if your teammates are shooting from one general direction and you get a different angle on your enemy, portal to a different angle, start applying pressure from three different areas so your teammates can take your portal back and forth until your enemy can't handle the pressure anymore and they've collapsed. And for my last step, I'll be providing you with some insights on when you should be using Wraith tactical ability when you're using your portal. For example, you could use your tactical ability at the start of your portal which will grant you immunity for 4 seconds at the start of your ability, and you'll be able to enjoy the boosted movement speed at the end of your portal, which is 57% additional movement speed. Or, you could save your tactical ability towards the end of your portal, to where it's at 35-40% to where you have remaining left into your portal, you could hit your tactical Q, and then you'll be invincible for the remaining of your ult. So that means you can get behind enemy lines, or you could just set your team up for that amazing flank. And I think that'll wrap it up for today's video. Let me know down below if you found these tips, tricks, and overall guide helpful. And who should I do next? Let me know down below. But hopefully you could incorporate all of these strategies into your own gameplay using Wraith Tactical, Passive, and Ultimate Ability. And incorporate the tips as well. It's been fun teaching you guys and reading the feedback. I'll catch you next time. It's been Warham. Peace out.